And let's bring on right now uh, the congresswoman that Liz Cheney, the first Democrat that she has endorsed in a political campaign. Alyssa Slotkin of Michigan joins us. Uh, it's good to have you on. If you could talk to us about uh, what Liz Cheney's endorsement means uh, for your campaign. Well, look, I mean, Liz offered in our final week um, in September of voting. She came up to me on the floor and, and offered to do this. I was surprised. Um, she said, anything I can do, and that started the conversation. And I, I thought it was important, um, you know, a week before the election to just recenter us on what elections are about, what this election is about, and why it's important to elect people who you may not agree with 100%, mm -hmm. but who have some decency and some integrity. And I think, look, Liz and I disagree on a lot of issues, a lot of very hot issues in Michigan, but we agree on one really big thing, which is preserving our democracy. So um, I was happy to have her in, and, and it spoke to a lot of, I think, Republicans, independents, and Democrats in my district. And, and tell me what the response was, what you're seeing. I mean, was it muted or do you have, is there a, a, a following in your district for a politician like Liz Cheney? Yeah, it was not muted. I mean, we had about 800 people sign up um, in the first 24 hours. We couldn't fit them all in. We had to turn people away. So it was a, it was a full house, and there's there's been a lot of coverage of it. Um, in my mind, um, you know, I, I was elected in 2018 for the first time, yes, because Democrats really came out. But in my Republican-leaning district, I also had a ton of Republicans, particularly Republican mm -hmm. women, who flipped and voted for a Democrat for the first time. So it's speaking to those folks who are into independently minded and in Michigan we still have a lot of ticket splitters and independently minded voters so um, she was I think an important figure for them. Yeah, as a congresswoman I was out in LA this past weekend and while I was watching a football game with my son uh, every other commercial was an attack ad on Katie Porter they might as well have drawn horns on her she was the worst human being of all time she's destroying America etc et just over the top but I was shocked in a market as massive as Los Angeles, uh, just the constant barrage of ads. Somebody is spending a ton of money to take Katie Porter out. Is it that way in your district as well? Yeah, unfortunately, I think we're now rated the most expensive House congressional race in the country, um, just based on spending, particularly from super PACs. Um, the airwaves, I mean, you should see my dad watching TV, watching his shows with his shotgun on his lap, just ready to shoot at the TV. Um, it, is, um, it is incessant, and, you know, people can't stand that. Um, and it, it just shows you just the sheer amount of money that's now in politics that's affecting um, how people vote. So but, I'm not but, but, surprised but I'm at all. Congresswoman, well, with so much at stake, are the Democrats, are Democratic super PACs, are they, because they sure as hell weren't in, in Katie Porter's district, are they in your district returning political fire? Yeah, I think what we're seeing across the country is that the Republican super PACs have way more money, um, but in tough races like mine, the candidate raised more money. So we are able to maintain parity here um, because, um, frankly, I raised more money than my opponent, and, and that's how I'm keeping my head above water. So that's a trend we've seen across the country. What's new about it mm -hmm. is that we're seeing this in kind of blue states, right? Really, really Democratic areas like California and New York. It's It sort of throws me off a bit as someone who's from a very purple, very swing, swingy state to see all my peers in blue states being attacked in such a serious way. Congresswoman, when we had you on uh, several weeks ago, a couple of months ago now, actually, uh, it was still you were feeling the impact of the Dobbs decision, the overturning of Roe versus Wade. You said on your race that it had clearly made an impact on the support you were getting and on the numbers. Is that still true? Are you finding that, the, that abortion rights and that decision is still as salient today as it was then? Well, I don't think it's, I mean, in Michigan, we have it on the ballot, right? We have something called Proposition 3, which is codifying Roe in the state of Michigan because we are a total ban state. So I think for people, it's very, very relevant. It, it's still, it, they're going to be voting on it in six days here. But I think, you know, the, the countervailing wind on the economy is a very real thing. Every single family I know is struggling with, you know, the cost of living. So I, I think it's still there, but it's just not the only issue people are considering. So here is Liz Cheney uh, talking about why she endorsed you. Take a listen. This is, by the way, the first time I have ever campaigned for a Democrat. Yeah. 
And I have to tell you that it was not a hard decision at all. We have to elect good people. We have to elect people who are competent. We have to elect people who will do the work. We have to let, elect people who take their obligations seriously. And all of those things describe Alyssa Slotkin. The United States is the oldest democratic republic in the world, and we're only 246 years old. And if we want to ensure the survival of our republic, we have to walk away from politics as usual. We have to walk away. We have to stand up, every one of us, and say, we're going to do what's right for this country. We're going to look beyond partisan politics. If the people in our party are not doing the job they need to do, then we're going to vote for the people in the other party, because we are Americans above all else. Alyssa Slotkin, six days to go. What's your message to voters? My message is don't let anyone tell you how you should be voting. You're an independently minded person. Make your own choices and do what's right for the country, which is not having a leader who just tells you everything you know that they, you want to hear. It's about having leaders that when the doors are closed, when you're not in the room, they're making choices based on decency and integrity. And, and I hope that I have earned people's vote. All right. Thank you so much. Democratic Democrat Congressman Alyssa Slotkin of Michigan, thank you very much. So